So I want to take a look at a second related rates problem. And what might be the best use of your time is to uh, pause the video, have a sheet of paper, have if you've got this um, reference sheet for the steps to go through to solve a related rates problem, that would be an awesome thing to have, and see if you can keep up with me step by step as we go through the problem. All right, let's take a look at the problem that we're solving this time. All right, so we're saying that air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of five cubic feet per minute. What is the rate of change of the radius when the radius is two feet? All right, so we remember that the first step is to make a drawing of the problem. So pause the video now and see if you can do that. All right, so spheres are kind of hard things to draw because it's a three-dimensional figure. But one way that people kind of think about it is that if you draw a circle and then you kind of draw an ellipse that's got the same endpoint, that kind of looks like the equator of the, of, the, um, of the sphere. All right, and so we can pick this point right here and that kind of looks like the center of the sphere. All right, and so we've got the radius. That's something that we're talking about in this problem. Remember, we wanna make a list of the facts that we know or just circle them in the problem. We wanna keep track of both the static values and the rates. We wanna include the fact that we're being asked to calculate. And then we'll combine that with step three, which is creating variables to express those values and then using derivative notion um, when, notation when we're talking about the rates. So see if you can do that for this problem. Okay, so what we have right now is we've got the air being pumped into the thing at five cubic feet per minute. All right, and we have that the radius is two feet. Okay, so there are two things changing when you pump air into a balloon. What are the two things that are changing? Well, the radius is changing and also the volume of the balloon is changing, okay? Because the balloon is getting bigger, which makes its radius bigger. So this five cubic feet of air that's being pumped into the balloon is the change in the volume, all right? So we're going to express that fact by saying that the change in volume with respect to time is equal to, let me ask you, should we put in positive five or negative five here? What do you think the difference between them is and which do you think is the right one to use for this problem? Well, we would use positive five to express that the volume is increasing over time and a negative value is going to say that it's shrinking over time. In this case, air is being pumped into the spherical balloon. So the rate is changing at positive five cubic feet per minute. All right, and so we wanna know what's happening when the radius is two feet. So R equals two feet. Remember, even though R is a function of time, we're gonna treat it kind of at the same time as a function of time and thinking about the specific value when we wanna find the rate, okay? So this is using all of our facts. And what we wanna know is we want to calculate the rate of change of the radius. So what they're asking us to find is the change in the radius over time. All right, so the values we have aside from time are the radius and the volume. The next step is coming up with a formula that combines all of those variables. So what is an equation that combines the volume of a sphere with the radius of a sphere? Well, we know the definition of the volume of a sphere. I actually gave it to you over here. Um, sometimes uh, it'll be a simple thing like a Pythagorean theorem and other times it'll be, you know, a fact like this, that the volume of a sphere is equal to four thirds pi times the radius cubed. Um, sometimes they'll give this to you. Um, if it's something that I wouldn't expect you to have memorized, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. 
All right, step five is to implicitly differentiate this formula with respect to time. V equals four thirds pi r cubed. So differentiate that with respect to time. Pause the video. Okay, so the derivative of V with respect to time is dV dt. Four thirds times pi is just a constant. We're gonna treat pi like it's a constant. So this is like the coefficient in front of R3. So we're gonna use the power rule. So three times four thirds pi. times r squared. And then we need to multiply that because we're implicitly differentiating with respect to time. We need to add in this factor of dr dt. All right. And so now we have enough information to solve the problem. We want to calculate what dr dt is. We're given that dv dt is equal to 5. Those threes cancel each other out, is equal to 4 pi times r squared, we're given that r is 2, times dr dt. So 4 times, that's 4 times 2 squared, 4 times 4 is 16 pi dr dt, and we divide both sides by 16 pi, and we get that dr dt is equal to 5 over 16 pi. And what's the units for this? We're talking about the change in radius with respect to time. So what do you think our units for this are gonna be? Well, our volume is in terms of cubic feet. So the radius is going to be measured in feet. And the time that we're measuring this in is in minutes. So the exact value is five over 16 pi feet per minute. And sometimes when you have a problem like this, they'll ask you to calculate that and express it to two digits of precision um, because somebody in the real world is actually doing this. If they're not asking you to do that, then don't round that, you know, don't clear out the pi and express it to the number of digits that you feel are sufficient. Make sure you give that precise value unless you're instructed to do otherwise. So that's another example of how we can solve the related rates problems just by going through the process step by step.